Well, I'm back in Cleveland I, from Wyoming and the SKB Foundation's uh, great workshop, their 10th anniversary, was really fabulous. And while the, we were out there, uh, one of the guests that was brought out to the workshop by SKB was the new editor of Plain Air magazine. He's an artist friend of mine by the name of Steve Doherty. He's now the new editor of Plain Air magazine. And um, he's also a really good painter and loves to paint outdoors. And so uh, I took the opportunity to uh, talk to him a little bit and interview him to find out what his uh, ideas were and uh, for the new magazine and also to give people a little bit of a background on who he is. I got him to talk about himself a little bit which he's very reluctant to do sometimes but anyway uh, this is just a short interview with him and I hope you like it. Hi I'm Steve Doherty. I'm editor of Plan Air magazine and here at the uh, ranch out in Wyoming with a number of plein air painters who were part of the Susan K. Black Foundation workshops. Um, I started out to be a painter uh, and a printmaker actually. I got an MFA in printmaking which is all how to make etchings, engravings, screen prints, woodcuts. Um, and as I always said, um, printmakers are fascinated with process because it's a medium that requires a knowledge of process and manipulation of process and I think that interest led me into publishing and interviewing artists to ask them about their process and even when I was working for another art magazine I interviewed a friend of mine a guy named Tom Beekner and I said to Tom you know the frustration I have is that when I with a nine to five job I start a painting on Saturday and then three weeks later I go back to it and I've lost interest in the painting. I don't re remember what my motivation was. And Tom said to me, Doherty, what you need to do is to take up plein air painting. He said, you've got it. You can go out whenever the time is available, work for two to three hours. You can finish the painting. It's over. It's done. Um, and you don't have to get frustrated about being in an incomplete work of art. And he said, besides which, you know, plein air painting goes back centuries. It's not quite clear when it began, but there's stories that even um, Velasquez uh, did plein air paintings when he was waiting for the Pope to uh, come for a sitting. And certainly in the 19th century, it was part of a big tradition about among European artists first and then American artists to go out into the landscape to do sketches, to do finished paintings, and with that comes some very specific requirements in terms of the materials and techniques you use. You have to be able to carry your equipment into the into this, uh, landscape. You generally have to limit the number of supplies you carry because it adds more weight if you buy more tubes of paint and brushes and panels. So there's a, there's a kind of um, process, again, that can be described that can be helpful to other people who are interested in plein air painting. The plein air magazine actually was published from 2004 to 2006 by Streamline Publications. And it was successful, but the problem was that they committed to a monthly frequency, which was just overwhelming in terms of the staff and the readership and the advertisers. So the magazine, um, went converted to fine art connoisseur and the publisher Eric Rhodes who was a dedicated plein air painter himself always wanted to bring it back so when I was making a transition last year I called Eric up and I said you know if you're serious about this let's talk let's get together and meet so Eric spends his summers in the Adirondack Mountains so I drove up and we went painting for a couple of days we spent a lot of time talking we got a sense that the two of us really were of one mind about what the magazine should be. We discussed what we thought were the weaknesses of the original version of the magazine. Uh, there were a lot of complaints that it was too West Coast oriented, that it was too oil painting oriented. Um, 
some you know comments that had come back from the subscribers. So we made it our mission to kind of refocus the magazine and also take advantage of this new digital age that we live in. So as Eric Rhodes and I were talking about how to revive Plan Air magazine in for today's world, we were very conscious of the fact that the digital world has changed everything in terms of publishing and also in terms of the way artists communicate with one another. So one of the things we decided to do, for example, was to forego traditional direct mail where you print a brochure and you put a stamp on it and you stick it in the mail and you send it to mailing lists of people. Instead, we used the social media, Facebook, Twitter, websites, because what we were finding is that more and more artists are using those formats, particularly Facebook, Facebook because it has a stronger image uh, connection. So we let people know in December of 2010 that we were going to reissue Plan Air magazine. And within 24 hours, a thousand people signed up for subscriptions. So that gave us a pretty clear idea that this was the way to communicate with Plan Air artists. We also decided that we would issue the magazine both in a print format and in a digital format because um, we know that there are lots of artists outside of the United States who want to be connected to other Plan Air painters and they don't want to spend the money for postage to ship a print magazine. And there are a lot of people who now read their books, newspapers, magazines on in, in a digital format, not a print format. So Plan Air Magazine by itself is about 114 printed pages and then we add 40 pages of content to make the digital edition. Um, and we have a weekly e-newsletter because there's so much sort of breaking news, as it were, about people winning awards in Plan Air competitions, events being scheduled that artists can apply for, um, all sorts of activities, community groups they can join, associations, and you can't wait around for a magazine to arrive in the mail for that. So we have the e-newsletter where we can let people know this week what opportunities are out there, what competitions are open, um, who won prizes, how much con uh, prize money is being made available, what were the total sales at last weekend's Plan Air event. So it's, it's a way of kind of getting that communication going because Eric and I both firmly believe that we're talking to a community of people who like to be connected to one another, who are de dedicated and passionate about outdoor painting and all of the various aspects of that. The great thing I've found as editor is we're not just doing profiles of individual artists, we're talking about people who use outdoor painting as a way of promoting eco um, conservation, historic preservation, um, community support, all sorts of activities that are kind of related to this idea of painting directly from nature. I'm out here in Wyoming painting right now. Next weekend I'm going to be in Florida painting. After that I'll probably be going to the south. Uh, I've been invited to a painting event in Hawaii. Uh, and I'm not looking for sympathy, but what I'm trying to say is that to me it's an, it's an endless process. There is always something to learn. There's a, a new landscape to explore. There are new people to befriend. There is information to be shared. It's an enriching kind of activity that doesn't displace what you can do in the studio. The studio is a very sacred place and I would never want to kind of distract anybody's attention from that. But my idea is the same one that has been expressed by artists for hundreds of years, which is one way or another you have to kind of go to the source, which is nature. Whether you paint human beings, whether you paint landscapes, whatever it is, nature has more information than you can ever hold on to in your own mind. So you've got to get out into nature, see what happens with colors, see what happens with light, why is the eastern atmosphere different than the air in the west? Why is the humidity in Hawaii changing the color relationships? It's a fascinating and endlessly captivating kind of process. And there is a community of people who share that passion. They are all out there at events. Um, they want to help each other. They want to learn from each other. They want to be a part of this community. 
we learned, for instance, for the last issue, the most recent issue, the magazine, one of the most popular sections was the, air, the section in which we reported on what happened at events over the past three months. People loved feeling that connection to other people who share their passions, from whom they can learn. They see the images of what they painted, how they painted it, limited palette, extensive palette, toned surface, white surface. There's a lot of things to be explored, all of which helps to inform you as to what matters most to you, what allows you to express your feeling about life and the passion you have for being out in nature.